Welcome to today's lesson. Let's get right into it. We're going to be talking about a non-ideal pulley system today. And if we remember from our previous class that a non-ideal pulley means the pulley has mass. So pause the video now to take a quick look and read over the problem. Let's get right into it. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about some of the characteristics of the system. The pulley has moment of inertia of 10 kilogram meters squared and a radius of 0.2 meters. The mass, the, or I should say the counterweight, we were told was twice the mass of the box. Now, we need to first determine what the uh, coefficient of friction is of our ramp. So we're told that we were setting up an experiment to determine such a thing. When we did that, we had four forces acting on the box. We have the force due to gravity, the normal force, the force due to friction, and the applied force F. As always, we have to set up our coordinate system, positive x direction and positive y direction, as always, determine positive x direction to be in the direction where acceleration would occur. So start by summing the forces in the y to solve for your normal force. In this case, it's simply mg because we have no acceleration and no other components of any other forces in the y direction. Fn equals 490.5 newtons. Now let's sum the forces in the x direction. We have no acceleration again as we're moving at a constant velocity. So our applied force will equal the force due to friction. The force due to friction is simply the kinetic coefficient of friction times the normal force. Solving for mu k, we get approximately 0.51. Now, this was like our side problem, a mini problem within the bigger problem. So let's highlight that on the side and get it back to the main issue at hand. We'll add mu k to our diagram, and we'll get started again with free body diagrams. Always set up your free body diagrams. Let's actually start with the more difficult one first. Let's start with the block on the inclined plane. So we're going to draw, uh, redraw that block on the inclined plane. And remember, it's a 15 degree incline. And again, we have four forces acting on the block. The force due to gravity, the normal force. Now we have tension, T1, and the force due to friction that's trying to oppose the direction of motion. In this case, we don't have assumed acceleration. We do indeed have an acceleration we will define our positive x-axis to be in the direction of that acceleration. In that case, we have a tilted axis system, but that's okay. So let's look at the y-direction first. Let's sum the forces in the y. We are not accelerating in the y. So we have Fn, the normal force, is equivalent to the y component of gravity. So it's Fg cosine 15. Solving for Fn, we simply find that Fn, in this case, will be equal to 473.78 newtons. Now, interesting to note that Fn here is actually a lower value than it was previously on our side problem. Why is that the case? Well, we have less of the force of gravity pulling in that y direction, so Fn won't have to be as big. Solving our Newton's second law in the x direction, so the net forces in the x are equal to mass times acceleration in the x, we have our tension force, T1, our friction force, and a component of gravity. And indeed, we are accelerating the x. This is the question of the problem, is what is the acceleration of the system? Here we're going to solve for T1. T1 is an unknown, as well as A, but let's solve for T1. So T1 comes out to 368.582 plus 50A. Moving on to a second free body diagram, this time of the counterweight. What's really important to remember here is that we have a non-ideal pulley system. Therefore, we have two different tension values. Both masses do not experience the same tension. So we have T2 pulling the counterweight upwards and the force due to gravity pulling it downwards. And we assume the direction of acceleration is downwards. So we, let's, let's call this the positive y direction. So the sum of the forces in the y is Fg minus T2 and that equals mass times that same A value. We're going to have the block and the counterweight both accelerating with that A value. Solving for T2 gives 981 minus 10A. Okay, now the free body diagram of the pulley itself. So let's slow things down a bit and talk about how we do this. The pulley is experiencing two forces that cause it to rotate. In other words, these two forces contribute to the net torque on the pulley. These forces are T1 and T2. T1 
T1 in the direction of the block, and T2 in the direction of the counterweight. Let's talk about why they are directed in these directions. Think about it if you were the pulley. Let's say you wanted to rotate clockwise. You would feel the block slowing you down, and that's T1, whereas the counterweight would help speed you up, and that's T2. Now, we know that forces cause torques on masses if they act at some distance r away from the axis of rotation. Well, the axis of rotation for our pulley is the center of the pulley. So let's denote r1 to be the distance from the center to the force T1, and r2 to be the distance from the center to T2. Now, in this case, it just happens to be the radius of the pulley. But let's not forget, r in the formula tau equals r cross f does not necessarily mean a radius. Now, just like how for linear or translational motion, we defined a positive axis to be in the direction of acceleration, here, for rotational motion, we will define a positive theta direction to be the direction of angular acceleration. So I'm happy with that free body diagram, and now let's state Newton's second law, but the version for rotational motion. So your net torque is equal to your moment of inertia times your angular acceleration. So let's add up our two torques, where the force T2 will cause a positive torque in the positive theta direction, and the force T1 will cause a negative torque in the negative theta direction. Now remember that only the component of the force that is perpendicular to the R vector will induce a torque about the axis of rotation. However, in this example, both forces are entirely perpendicular to the R vector. Therefore, both forces will completely contribute to the torque about the center of the pulley. All right, so the only thing left to consider is what is our angular acceleration? We'll recall that angular acceleration is simply the tangential acceleration divided by the radius of the circle. In this case, the tangential acceleration will be the A we have been using this entire time. In other words, it is the acceleration of the block, rope, counterweight system moving past or moving over the pulley itself. So we can replace alpha with A over R. And that's it. So we're just going to clean this up a bit and get ready to substitute for the values of T2 and T1 that we've solved for previously, as they each simply had the A as an unknown. So let's take our T2 and substitute that in and take our T1 and substitute that in and simply solve for A. And there you have it, A equals 1.53 meters per second squared. Thanks for watching.